Now, let's start. Uh, let me first introduce you the talk that I'll be giving. Uh, it's all about uh, orchestration framework. Uh, it's called iOrchestra. It basically, it's based on Python 3.5 and native OpenStack bind bindings. And this talk will be about uh, the challenges that we've faced with building a synchronous orchestration for uh, OpenStack and for uh, another type of clouds. So let me introduce myself. My name is Dennis Magagon. I'm a software enthusiast. I mostly do open source, a bit corporate open source. So nevertheless. So how many frameworks do you guys use uh, in your work? So starting this moment, I know 35 frameworks that actually do orchestration for, a, for even OpenStack. And uh, like 35 with this is number of, of uh, different tools for different languages. So, and there are like six of them are designed for uh, Python specifically. So to today we're gonna talk a bit about Tosca. It's a topology of orchestration and specification for cloud applications and I, I orchestra and it's and how it implements the Tosca spec. So uh, a bit of history of on orchestration starting uh, initi uh, that point of time when uh, Amazon released their cloud formation, the uh, the templates for orchestration became like a uh, two mainstream thing for uh, building and, and orchestration platforms. Uh, as you know, Heat was inspired by Amazon CloudFormation and they even went in their own uh, spec, which is called uh, Hot. Uh, right after that, like a year ago, Terraform appears, made by HashiCorp, and uh, for now we have Ansible that uh, capable to do not only software orchestration and even cloud orchestration, starting, I guess, latest release. Uh, so, Tosca by itself is more than gen generic spec, so we can do a lot of stuff with it. So, we can orchestrate uh, clouds in the s same manner. So, what we can do in a hybrid cloud orchestration, and we can do multi cloud orchestration within single template. And we also can do uh, software orchestration, would it be uh, Ansible, Compo uh, Docker Compose, uh, Shell Scripts, Puppet Chef, or whatever. Uh, tool you use for orchestration, unless it doesn't have uh, Python binding. So what is Tosca and why you've heard a lot about that? Um, Tosca by itself represents a template. Initial spec was made for XML and the uh, latest uh, version of simple profile uh, allows you to write a template using YAML. So core components of Tosca templates is, in, is an import, it's actually defining how, which type of plugins you want to use. Basically, you specify how, how you, which types you inherit. So you can use types for Amazon, you can use types for OpenStack, or whatever. It also provides uh, types. Basically, it's an abstraction that uh, allows you to define types that will be subsequently implemented within template. And also, we have... Uh, entities that will be executed. So they, it is a, a topology template itself. So by itself, uh, Tosca provides capabilities that are defining uh, how your resource, how your node will be uh, executed and treated uh, by en engine. Uh, we also have artifacts. For example, uh, Tosca by itself pre uh, Traits images, traits scripts, files, uh, everything that has uh, file representation as artifacts. So in Tosca spec, there, uh, there is an example when you can uh, you, when you bind uh, an image to uh, a node of virtual machine by specifying specific artifact for that virtual machine. Um, so uh, the, each node also has requirements. Requirements uh, is a specific uh, definition of uh, which node should be provisioned before uh, no, uh, before uh, root node will be provisioned also. Um, so, and the core component of Tosca types is a node. Node represents uh, a specific entity of, uh, of an orchestration. So would it be a virtual machine or uh, image or um, a Cinder volume, network port, or whatever you would, you would define as node actually. So uh, in order to define um, the connection between two, two nodes, is, uh, Tosca, for, for such case, provides the relationships. So basically, Tosca allows you to uh, bind two nodes with a specific relationship, whether it be 
would one node depends on another or, will, or it will be related to. So this type of, type of relationships actually tells an orchestration engine how to treat those nodes. Would, would they be able to provision separately or would they be provisioned subsequently? Um, so, and each node has a, a mention of uh, each dependency. So, you have capabilities that actually allows it, en uh, engine to uh, define how this node can be treated. So, for example, if you have a virtual machine, it has a capability called linkable. It, it means that uh, this, uh, the node of virtual machine can have a link to port. So basically, uh, you're tell, telling how to uh, connect, po connect port and the virtual machine. And also, node has requirements. So it tells explicitly which node should be provisioned before node gets provisioned in, in, a sec in, in the end. So, and each uh, node has a di ty different type of uh, parameters and attributes. Parameters is, uh, is something that defined within a template. So you can use a different uh, functions that we'll be uh, talking later. Uh, and uh, each node has uh, uh, attributes. Uh, this is immutable, immutable uh, parameters of node that will be available once node gets provisioned. And uh, also each node has runtime attributes. This is something which is dynamic. Uh, they will be uh, uh, evaluated or, uh, or described within, uh, within provisioning. So for example, uh, for OpenStack, you don't have uh, a token before you get, uh, you get actual uh, authorization. So the token is in uh, runtime property. Um, so uh, topology template by itself uh, contain, uh, consists three, di three uh, groups. Uh, it has inputs, it has uh, node templates, and outputs. So inputs, as I already told, uh, w with inputs you can define which type you would inherit in the parent template. Node templates is an implementation of specific types that you're importing using inputs. And also you have an output, it's like similar to hit, uh, uh, hit stack outputs. So uh, similar to other orchestration platform services, uh, you can configure it to uh, parameterize your template as much as you want. And um, for example, we have a node that's called like uh, OpenStack authorization. It accepts different parameters. And we have uh, interesting functions here. Uh, actually, there are a uh, few of them. One function just gets inputs, so it, it binds your template inputs to a node definition. Then we have a um, function that uh, works with parameters and attri attributes. So, um, as already told, outputs are something uh, very configurable, and you finally you will get a dictionary or mapping with uh, that you will define in, inside your template. So as I already told that we have four type of function. One is property uh, retriever, one is input retriever, uh, one is uh, uh, attribute retriever, and the, f the final one is concatenation. So th these are four functions that Tosca simple profile defines in spec. So uh, for now, uh, since we started to work with iOrchestra, we tried to figure out if there are already uh, exist, uh, if there are any existing tools that are uh, designed to work with Tosca. And for now we have a Tosca parser that was built by uh, Tucker team and uh, Tosca parser lives under Big Tent eventually. We have uh, Aria which is started by uh, Gigaspaces as an uh, uh, extensible framework for Tosca parsing and we have parser for Cloudify but it's like it, it is too pin, uh, it's too specific to Cloudify itself. And we have uh, a, Go, uh, a parser written on Go, which is called Toscalib. So basically, they are do what they do. They do parse. But none of them are actually providing you something executable. So what was the value of having a template if you can't run it? So what is iOrchestra? iOrchestra is a, is a Python framework made with Python 3.5. Uh, it has a three parts. You have an engine 
you have plugins, and you have persistency. Um, sorry. No. So how I orchestra addresses Tosca. So w when you have a template, you uh, tos uh, Tosca parser parses template into uh, a graph. And iOrchestra makes that an ordered graph as ordered graph and defines a sequence of execution for each, each of node. So this is how actually Tosca looks. You, you, have, you don't have order. You have only the links and dependencies. Um, so uh, as Confucius said, the man who removes a mountain begins by carrying a small stones. So what it, what it actually means? Um, from another graph, Tosca tries to uh, build a graph that can uh, build a se sequential graph when the root node has no dependencies, but every next node uh, after it depends on, uh, on the node that doesn't have dependencies. And it also doesn't mean that you, in, in graph you would have more, uh, only one node that doesn't have dependencies. It is possible that you will have a bunch of them. So you, you will have just a, a sequence of node that doesn't have dependencies, and they will be executed on the start. And uh, once those nodes are provisioned, provisioned next node will t uh, provisioning will take its place. So in a orchestra, each node is just a definition of, uh, it's a set of coroutines that are defining its lifecycle events. So each node has uh, at least four lifecycle events. But a orchestra doesn't force you to have all of them. You only should have uh, two of them. One is, is create, another, uh, and another is delete. But Tosca spec defines uh, two more. You have create, you have start, you have stop, and you, ha uh, you have configure even, and you have uh, stop and delete. But uh, for some cases, you don't, you don't need to have a, a configure. You don't have to have a stop. Because for example, if you have authorization node, how you would stop the author authorization? Like, it, do, it doesn't really make sense for different type of nodes. So uh, coming from the template definition nodes into actual code, uh, we have a dynamic class, defini uh, class construction that actually builds uh, a, a node class using uh, predefined uh, uh, methods that are actually our coroutines. So uh, if you can see, there are like two events def defined here. We have a create, but then we have a delete. And uh, when, you, when you see the implementation section, you have uh, a, mod, uh, a function pass that will, that will be used by uh, iOrchestra to retrieve a, a function, uh, function definition. Basically, like you know, in Python, everything is an object. So you can just import, uh, uh, iOrchestra just imports that and tries to execute with uh, specific parameters as you can, which are specified in input section. Um, so the same thing works for uh, uh, relationships. Relationship defined w with uh, two, um, two, ev two events, uh, two interfaces, I mean, sorry. Uh, we have link and unlink, and uh, each implementation follows the same pattern as, a as uh, regular nodes. So uh, the whole life cycle of, uh, of a node has a lot of different events. So you can see we have four for provisioning, uh, managing lifecycle, and we have at, at least two for managing dependencies. So for example, if you have node A that has a link to node B, node B will be provisioned first, then link to node A, node A will be provisioned. And it, everything that happens in system, it's a code. So um, why a orchestra is that uh, important, and why coroutines are so important in our, uh, in our life, uh, uh, Template management. So, since since uh, orchestra uh, since uh, Tosca does not provide an ordered graph, uh, the main task for a orchestra is to build a se sequential graph and convert that se sequential graph of nodes into a specific list of coroutines to execute. This is actually the one benefit that allows you to run uh, provisioning step by step. You actually should await on on, on each coroutine. So you would have like a set of nodes for one coroutine that will be awaited. Then if you want to check some policies, you will have, uh, you can run the, uh, your policy che checking. And then you get again hit, gonna hit await again and you will get a new node provisioned. So you don't have to do anything like m manually. And also you are able to see 
um, that current design of iOrchestra is the be is the best option because uh, when we try to figure out what, what kind of a graph we can use, uh, the first idea was to have a graph that has the next view. You have a node, and then to provision uh, that doesn't have dependency, and then you have a dependency on node A that, and you define node B as a de as a node that has dependency on node A that doesn't have dependency at all. So you would have like a lot of unordered trees, and this is something that really hard to process and hard to uh, calculate. So for example, if you have a template with at least 100 nodes uh, to provision, you would have a lot of, t you would spend a lot of time to, uh, fig to build the dictionary, to build a graph, basically. Um, so the problems are told, it's like calculation time. The second problem is uh, it's hard to roll back uh, the, the, deploy the deployment with uh, Thatch Graph because uh, the process of building the reverse, reverse tree is not that, not that easy and now, now think that how many trees you have to reward. So the benefit of current graph processing is that you have a sequence of tasks and each task can be rolled back just by setting the uh, specific flag. Um, so why coroutines, why we decided to make something asynchronous? So um, since we work with APIs, we talk to sockets, and uh, since uh, Python 3.5, we have an ability to use uh, cooperative multi-tasking. Uh, so basically, we have a context switch on each uh, IO bound operation. Um, so since we use an OpenStack bindings, we, have the, we use their APIs, and we decided to make it synchronous because, as I already told, we, we can have in graph, in graph, we can have a lot of nodes that doesn't have dependencies, so we can just instantiate them is, uh, without waiting on other, other nodes. So the main problem right now is that iOrchestra is not, is not state, is state, uh, stateless, but their deployments are, are stateful. Because uh, if you just want to provision, then you just hit the provision and you will have, uh, you have uh, some stack of resources. But if you want to manage the full life cycle, you have to f define your own persistency, and uh, you should care about the state of a deployment. So the mission of iOrchestra is to automate deployment for you. Uh, it's not a product. It's only an open source framework. It, doesn't, it, it is not driven by some, uh, any company. It's driven by enthusiasts uh, because uh, the, main, the main reason why we made iOrchestra is that we don't want to have yet another service in, the uh, in our clouds. So we are full with uh, uh, infrastructure as a service paradigm of cloud. So that's why we decided not to follow HIT, not to follow Ansible, not to follow um, Cloudify. We just decided to have our own tool for doing an asynchronous orchestration and have it as a library, but not a service. So what are the problems with uh, iOrchestra right now? As you know, uh, only this fall, OpenStack uh, completely switched to Python 3.4, but uh, there are like two, two types of compatib uh, Python 3 .com compatibility. You have a parser compatibility, and you have a feature compatibility. So for example, for now, OpenStack can run on Python 3.4, but it's still compatible, for example, with Python 2.7, and, and, it it, and it means that you cannot use features from 3.5. And the main feature that I'm referring to is uh, uh, event loops based on the uh, C implementation of ePoll mechanism. So um, when it would change, uh, we had a discussion with, uh, a t with teams that are working with OpenStack SDK, that are working with the client specifically, in order to enable uh, 3.5 asyn uh, asynchronous IO bound tasks, but it, it would not happen like e easily in, it, in the in time frame. It would take some time, even more than one release, because we have Django that uh, we have Horizon that based on Django that doesn't really support well Python 3.5 and uh, its uh, asynchronous uh, API. So, and yet, this is not 2020 yet, so why should we care about Python 3.5? This is the, the main problem of like OpenStack right now. 
So what I already told that we have a benefit. So you can just roll back your deployment on any state of it. So for example, if you just started a deployment that has some uh, misconfiguration and, it, and you know that it will fail, you, you can just await on, f on full uh, graph execution and then you will receive the deployment with a negative state and you will just say, just ro roll it back. The, and that, that's all, you will, all your resources will be cleaned up. Um, so for now we have uh, like uh, two plugins. Uh, one is for OpenStack because we are mostly working with OpenStack itself and we have a cha chains plugin. So for example, if we have a deployment that takes a lot of nodes in its implementations, it's not that easily easy to maintain that deployment. So we actually converted a orchestra into pl self plugin. So for now, you, you, a orchestra can use its own API to uh, create a, uh, a node that will represent a deployment. So basically, we do some sort of proxy. So each node will create a deployment of a template. Uh, why we did that? Because uh, we did a lot of networking orchestration. And uh, we, uh, when, we have, when we need to build an infrastructure for, um, for example, virtual ro rotor that will work on top of OpenStack networking, we had to create a, lot of, a bunch of servers, a bunch of networks, and we need somehow simplify that. So that, that's why we decided to have a chain, a chain plugin then, and we can uh, distribute the work within our team. So one team develop one, uh, one blueprint, uh, one team develops like another blueprint and, and finally we can have master blueprint that will just inherit all of them. Um, so this is like the main feature of iOrchestra and uh, why it simplifies uh, the development of new plugins. So we didn't have an API plugin. The main thing that we wanted from developers and uh, actually this, uh, this requirement is forbidden by, uh, uh, is checked by iOrchestra, each node lifecycle event should be uh, coroutine because you cannot just, in Python, you cannot just await on simple function. Um, so um, what are requirements for plugins? They are not mandatory. Uh, this is only like a good style of development. So for example, in OpenStack plugin, uh, we, de we decided to split tasks with uh, tasks uh, that will contain the lifecycle events for nodes and we have like core API, uh, core uh, automation in this, in the other package. Th that was made because we want to allow developers to uh, make, a uh, to have a plugins that are having dependencies on other plugins. So for example, if you want to build a something uh, more complex, would it, would it say like multi-cloud plugin? So you can just uh, build a dependency to uh, to iOrchestra OpenStack plugin, and then to iOrchestra AWS plugin, and then just build uh, nodes from actual API automation. So uh, this is what I told you can just you keep your code simple. This is what, what it actually really mean, it means for development. Um, so we also have uh, two contrib library, uh, libraries. One is persistency, which is made only for like a reference project in order to show how you can uh, treat state of your deployment. Basically, for now, iOrchestra has a two, two types of uh, persistency. Uh, uh, you have a context pers persistency that actually has a, a template, a serialized template, serialized inputs, and uh, uh, other type of persistency is node persistency. So basically, you have a two, different, two different models that uh, after deserialization can be combined into one uh, work, working solution. So you would have uh, a new context that can, can be executed. And we also have an async SSH plugin. It is based on Python async SSH uh, library, which is based on Python 3.5, 3.6. Um, it was made only for like software configuration using, using bash scripts, not, nothing else. And uh, we've seen that like not, there are not so many uh, usage of it and we just decided not to support that for, we have a stable version and we did not contribute to that more. So we only focused on developing a core part. 
Um, so let's time to do some actions as says action man. <laughs> so uh, what we wanted to have, we, as you can see, and uh, as I already told, we're gonna have a distributed router that, as you can see, we have uh, an external network, we have router, uh, we have a uh, management network that looks with a bl light blue color. Uh, and we have a virtual machine that is connected to all of three networks, except external, but it connected subsequently through router. And uh, it is meant that traffic from uh, machine, uh, the virtual machine below uh, in the uh, left corner will have a ro routing, uh, traffic routing to node into right corner. Um, so um, let me just find your video. So uh, what we're gonna have, uh, this is just a script for a demo that will be available uh, right after I finish this talk. So uh, we have a function that actually runs a deployment that has a breakpoint on undeploy in order to show you how, it, how your graph actually being processed into real environment. And then we just run the uh, uh, uninstalling. So uh, let me just scroll back, scroll forward. So for now, it will take like a couple of minutes to create the whole stack. So basically we have a three virtual machines, three networks, three subnets. We have three ports, we have floating AP and we have a router, and all of these resources are being combined into a single deployment. So uh, all of these logs is like, don't really care about that, it just the, defines how your, uh, uh, how your resources are being connected. Everywhere that you see row, the, uh, the link uh, action happens, and when you see the start, stop operations, and uh, you can see node, node names. So it will take some time, but we can just scroll forward a bit. Oh, so we're gonna go to Horizon and go to networking topology. And uh, let's uh, wait a bit. Yep, we're almost there. Yep, so as you can see, we have uh, what, what we wanted. Uh, this is actually, uh, this demo was made on uh, uh, Mit Mit Mitaka release, but it, uh, but it still works with latest OpenStack releases. Since we don't uh, uh, limit our dependencies on Python, by, uh, on OpenStack bindings to, uh, to different type of OpenStack releases, since uh, OpenStack tries to maintain uh, compatibility within releases, except load balancer. So we made a stub that works with both of them. So, and we have router, we have networks, we have ports and uh, external ports. Yes, yes, like too long for me. And uh, since we have uh, a breakpoint, we have, as you can see, we have a couple of attributes. We have deployment context, we have rollback enabled, we have serialization enabled. And we have uh, a template that I will just show you in a minute. So we're just gonna hit the breakpoint here and then go forward. And also we'll take almost a sim uh, similar time to dis destroy the whole deployment. And um, you will see that the, the, there are some concurrent tasks that are actually running when you have a different uh, computes are being stopped, started, and etc. And it will take like, and it always takes some time on compute destroying, but it will finish eventually. Yep. It deletes the last machine, I suppose. Yes, it should be the last one. No, this, this one the last. Yep, and we're done. So, uh, as you can see, uh, I orchestra. Uh, it, it's a, some sort of like competitor to uh, existing solutions, but if you're considering to have a framework, uh, except service, this is kind of a good, uh, good start point. Um, so let's go to presentation. So as already told, uh, our benefits are that we are kind of modern. We are use Python 3.5. 
uh, we are not yet another service with REST API, and uh, our plugin system doesn't require an, an API. So we just do coroutines. And also our limitations are, we still, we are 3.5 Python because, uh, and I know that there are a lot of software that are built uh, for OpenStack that actually runs Python 2.7. So uh, it's kind of pro would be a problem because we're using uh, a sugar in syntax for coroutines. And uh, the main problem for now, for like for OpenStack plugin, is that um, an API that we used from OpenStack clients is synchronous. So uh, each time you hit an API, an API endpoint, your, your GIL get block, gets blocked. So you, you have to wait until the context will switch one, once you will have a response. Um, so if you are someone who worked with OpenStack, Amazon, or whatever, just consider to at least look at uh, iOrchestra. If you are doing software orchestration, uh, I know that uh, Ansible, that Chef Puppet, uh, Docker, and Bosch, you can, you can write the plugins for them to run. Like for, for Bash, you have async SSH or Paramico or Fabric or whatever you want to use. Um, so, questions if you have such? Okay, good. So, thank you for attending this last talk. I know it's kind of hard, it's like a long day. So, if you have questions, just mail me. Uh, iOrchestra is completely uh, open sourced. You have an organization, GitHub. And also you have documentation on the read the docs. Just take a look at them. They are pretty nice, <laughs> I would say. Thank you, guys. And have a safe flight home. Yay. Thank you.